Mackenzie Johnston with Cattle News Central, bringing you your January 31st cattle industry headlines. Brought to you by AgRisk Advisors. They provide risk management programs to livestock producers all across the West. Whether you are concerned about price or weather risk, AgRisk Advisors, they are here to help. With current day market fluctuations, you and I both know there is nothing more important than locking in a price floor on your cattle. So if you'd like to learn more about an LRP, go ahead and reach out to an advisor today. Also sponsored by American Beef Producer Magazine. They offer in-depth articles on a wide variety of topics within our industry. They feature award-winning photography and so much more within their publication. Their February edition just came out. To check that out, go ahead and click on the American Beef Producer Magazine link up above in the caption that will take you to their Facebook page where you can check that out. American Beef Producer Magazine, guiding beef producers for over 25 years. And finally, Lemke Cattle. They're going to be hosting their bull sale on February 11th at the ranch near Lawrence, Nebraska. These naturally thick, heavy-muscled, complete Angus, Red Angus, and Balancer genetics are developed right, guaranteed, and built for profit with over half qualified as top dollar Angus sires, while also siring highly maternal, easy-keeping females that will keep you in the cow business. Go to LemkeCattle.com, DV Auction, or check them out on Facebook for weekly updates and videos. According to Meeting Place, during a meeting of the Grand Island Nebraska Rotary Rotary Club, Trey Wasserberger with TD Angus down in North Platte, Nebraska, he's also a co-organizer of Sustainable Beef, LLC, he told the group that funding is almost complete for the facility. The processing plant is slated to cost $325 million and construction is set to begin this fall. According to Wasserberger, Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts has proposed $15 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds for the facility, and they are also pursuing uh, additional state funding. The processing plant will be one quarter the size of Grand Island's JBS plant and will harvest approximately 1,500 head of cattle daily, the majority of those cattle coming from from feed yards from from the LLC's founders. In hopes of avoiding a labor shortage at the plant, Sustainable Beef will be compensating their employees generously. Median wage down in Lincoln County, which is North Platte, is right around $28,000. Starting wage at the processing facility is going to be $50,000 plus benefits, and there will and there will be 75 upper management jobs that pay over 75 grand, according to Wasserberger. Wasserberger went on to talk about the issue of construction costs. When the project was first proposed, uh, it was slated to cost $225 million, and today it is all the way up to $325 million. That is just in one year's time. Sustainable Beef LLC aims to provide producers and consumers with additional choices in supply of beef products here in Nebraska. Fox News has reported that Senate Bill 22-031 was recently introduced in Colorado's Senate to ban the hunting of mountain lions, bobcats, and other large cats in the state. This comes at a time when, when Colorado is currently dealing with wolf attacks. So to be specific, this bill prohibits shooting, wounding, killing, or trapping a bobcat, Canada lynx, or mountain lion. Exceptions to the bill include wounding or killing a bill cat, a big cat, excuse me, if the animal poses serious bodily harm and livestock owners would be able to shoot and kill a big cat if it is threatening their livestock. Those opposing the bill, of course, argue that without a hunting season, the population of these big cats will significantly grow, which would result in more wildlife and livestock attacks. The good news is that since this bill was introduced, three of its sponsors have dropped their support. So hopefully that does not gain any traction or go anywhere. This update is also sponsored by Circle 5 Cow School. If you are wanting to learn how to preg check your own cows or start AIing, Circle 5 Cow School is the way to go. They host classes almost every week from Texas to Tennessee. If you'd like to check out their schedule, head on over to circle5cowschool.com. That is the number five in there, or you can go ahead and just give them a follow on Facebook. The Cattle Range has reported that record high beef prices are beginning to take a toll on beef exports. China was a big player in the beef market back in October and November, but since then they have backed away from U.S. product. 
It's no, it's not a coincidence that the slowdown came once China lifted the restrictions on Brazilian beef exports. And those restrictions were in, were put in place after a couple BSE cases were reported down in Brazil. So shipments to China during the week of January 16th were only 641 metric tons, 41% lower than the average of the previous four weeks. Back in October and November, the shipments were almost 3,000 metric tons per week. So exports are definitely taking a hit as we start off this new year. And finally, I have some important news for Nebraska cattle producers. Tomorrow, so uh, Tuesday, February 1st, LB 1095, which will restore cattle producers' freedom of choice for the methods they choose to use to identify livestock for disease traceability, will be heard by the Unicameral's Ag Committee down in Lincoln. So LB 1095 was introduced by Ag Committee Chairman Senator Steve Halloran of Hastings, and it is similar to a bill that was passed in the Wyoming legislature last year. In recent weeks, numerous Nebraska, numerous Nebraska cattle industry lobbyists have argued that EID tags are voluntary here in the state, but that is not the whole story. So back in 2006, a bill was introduced by then Senator Cap Dirks of Ewing, Nebraska, and that bill enshrined voluntary animal ID under Nebraska state uh, state statutes, and that was the state law for 14 years. Then in 2019, the Animal Health and Disease Control Act was introduced and then passed in 2020. This act quietly repealed Dirks's bill from the state statute from the state statute and required Nebraska to mirror federal animal ID requirements. As you can all remember then, back in 2019, RCAF filed a suit and effectively defeated attempts by the USDA's Animal Plant Health Inspection Service, also known as APHIS, to force mandatory EID tags on um, cattle producers. So the issue we're looking at here is if our federal government would happen to revive its EID mandate under current Nebraska law, ranchers would have no choice but to comply. EID EID tags currently cost about $3.50 a a tag, and uh, that when you compare that to brand inspection, brand inspection only costs $0.85 per head. LB 1095 is an impactful bill that will restore cattle producers' rights to choose how they want to identify their animals. But to make sure that this bill passes, Senator Halloran needs everyone's help. Um, To submit comments, head on over to www.nebraskalegislature.gov. That website is listed above in the caption. All you got to do is click on it. That'll take you to where you need to be. Once you arrive at the site in the top right corner, you'll see uh, search current bill. All you got to do is type in 1095 and that will take you through the steps that you need to take to submit your comments. This has to be done by noon today, January 31st, in order for uh, those comments to be included in the official legislative record. So if you have anything to say about this situation, uh, all of you cattle producers here in Nebraska, I encourage you all to submit comments. That is all I have for you guys this morning. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. I hope the weather was gorgeous wherever you are at. It was absolutely beautiful here in central Nebraska. Have yourself a wonderful Monday. I'll catch you later.